I wasn't hungry last night. Please? I don't think I can handle an eating disorder on top of everything else. <laughs> God, that is exactly how Raising Girls feels. <laughs> Another thing, another thing, <laughs> another thing. And we're back. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> uh, it's the Articulate Love In. We are your hosts. I'm Joel. I'm Kelly. And we are the Articulate Love In. Uh, this is a spinoff of the Articulate Coven, our show about Anne Rice and all of her imagined worlds. Uh, I am one half of that mm -hmm. podcast. This is my lovely wife, Kelly, and she and I watch spooksy things and react to them for you. Yes. Uh, we started this whole adventure with Fright Night. If you haven't seen that video, it's on our YouTube channel link below. Um, we are now in episode two of Wolf Like Me. So these two episodes we're going to drop at the same time, but then it'll be week to week. So wherever you're watching this, you'll get episode three in a week. Um, but... I'm excited about this series. Like, I'm so glad you're hits enjoying the ground it. running, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad that you like it already. Um, you were just looking at some photos. Did you want to talk about that? Oh, yes. We're kid-free tonight, so it's easier for us to record. Our kids are old enough now where they don't have to be supervised every five seconds. So we Saturday could... Saturday mornings are glorious around here now. Oh, yeah, they're wonderful. But, like, so even if they were home, we'd be fine. But anyway, they're at Grandma's house... Uh, for the next night or two. But tonight, we're in Louisiana. In North Louisiana, but in Louisiana. Anyway, uh, you could see the Northern Lights. And if it is, what is today, October 10th? Uh, right. Yeah, as we're recording, it's the 10th. Yeah, so, I mean, mo most of the United States, I think, could see them tonight. So, I hope you got to see them. But we couldn't see it at our house, but our kids could where they were. I'll just put the I'll put the oh, yeah. on the oh, yeah, on the screen. No, that's all right. Yeah, I'm gonna sit them in the picture. I'll put but, it in the video. Yeah, they're not amazing, uh, but they're it's pretty and it's, it's nice to pretty. see. I well, hope you got to see it. And it's just one of those things that like the northern lights aren't supposed to show up in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, we're it's not, kind of fun. We're not north of anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Okay, so I wonder. So I I called a bunch of stuff in the first episode, like yes. accidentally, like speculating, and then almost immediately it would happen. My favorite is when I when I miscalled that he, he was he has he was divorced from his yes. his wife. He said ex. -wife. I was like sitting there, like oh, he's so the shocked. next sentence he's gonna tell him. So funny. Um, I think. Because this show is pretty short. I think it's only like six episodes a season, and it's only two <clears> seasons long. My guess is he finds out about the whole werewolf thing by the end of this episode, but I bet it's okay. I bet it's close to the end. I think it's like the climax is like, oh, my God, she's a werewolf sort of thing. That's my guess. Okay. Well, let's go. Thank you, Daddy Peacock and Mama Stan. I guess maybe that should be the other way around. I don't know. Pajamas. Emma, please answer me, sweetie. Oh, wow. Uh... Emma! Emma, answer me right now! Oh, God. It's so horrifying being a parent of a child. To be fair, I don't guess it gets better once they're not children anymore. Like, you're still oh, yeah. then this, like, they're exposed to the whole world, not just what you can control. How's she doing? <laughs> She's gonna be okay. Okay, so... My guess is that was a that was a flashback. That was a prequel. Because that was mom, right? No, I don't know. I'm not, not telling you tell anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna tell you anything. Okay, clearly not mom. My guess is aunt. I mean, even aunt would have come in and talked to her, though, probably, right? I mean, maybe give the dad a dad minute. a moment. Yeah, fair. yeah. Okay, fair. Uh, she did have an Australian accent, though, right? That woman did. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're more observant than I am, you know. So, was there a Groucho Marx quote that we missed in the beginning of this episode <laughs> that we need to call out real quick while we're no. in commercial break? Yeah. No. All right. Good. Rosie. Our dog is. She is very present actively. for this recording. Come here. She heard it's about a wolf. Come here. 
She's very interested. No, he just going to sit here and paw at me. She's just going to paw at you, mother. What yeah. she wants is your constant attention. <laughs> there she is. Come here, Rosies. People love ducks. Where are you? Rosie, Rosie you Rosies. Get in the frame. Oh, you're laying down. She's relaxing. She's chilling. All right. Did you want to harm yourself? It's important that you answer that, Emma. Okay, so no, not a flashback. This is this, she's the same age as she's been in the first episode. So this is like in time. Yes. Oof. I was scared that it was going to happen again. Panic attacks. Why don't we try your new medication? Certainly would have put yourself in that position if the fluoxetine worked. And there's like a quick run to pills. I'm this is yeah. not gonna be a soap a soapbox thing, but like yeah. I we've got a couple of kiddos who have had different issues in the past mm -hmm. and we have always been loath to not look, we're not anti medication of any kind. You and I have both used medications of all sorts of kinds yeah. at different times, uh, by by prescription, obviously. I mean to to it's just like you your phrase is like if you broke your leg, you'd put a cast on, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, they don't really seem to be connecting. Like, he's not very approachable. No, that's I mean, saying. maybe like, it's he's not... what they can get. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's true. We don't, we haven't seen, that's like, the maybe they've been in sessions and sessions and sessions, and that's all that he's ever gotten from her. My guess is that's not the first time that he's seen her. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, didn't feel like they were introducing each other, but still, <sighs> that was not. I I had a pediatrician when I was growing up. <laughs> I think maybe he wasn't even a pediatrician. I think he was just a GP. But anyway, he gave our whole town, he gave us all diagnosis of sinus issues. Like, no matter what was wrong with you. There was a woman that was pregnant and had gone to him and she had sinus <laughs> issues. There was a woman that had cancer of the brain. She had sinus issues. And that's all that he had claimed for. Anyway, the guy kind of got ran out of town over it. Um... Yeah, that's that kind of psychiatrist to me is like not so much, not for you. Gotcha. I dropped it off at home. Thought uh, you and I could walk, maybe get a little exercise. I did pee today. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that ain't a twelve-year-old response. I don't know what is. Man, I would not ever want to live in the outback. <laughs> but I could totally live in like suburban Australia. Should we get a dog? Why? Why not? You can get one. <laughs> a big one. But only like one time a month. We don't know that yet. Spoilers. Whatever. I mean, most werewolves are... I don't know about most werewolves, actually. I think there's she some that... She locked herself in a safe. Because she's not a werewolf. Totally let you go all the time. Oh, she's reading the book. Did she put that note in it? Yeah. <sighs> she's marked up those pages. If you want to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. I wasn't hungry last night. Please? I don't think I can handle an eating disorder on top of everything else. <laughs> God, that is exactly how Raising Girls feels. <laughs> another thing, another thing, another thing. God. To be fair, the boys aren't much better. I mean, yes, that's true. That's true. Hey, baby. That's true. I just, my boys aren't 12 anymore. I got two girls that are heading in that direction. Ugh. What? You go on and on about me. Makes no sense, baby. You're my entire world. Why do I have to talk to you? You don't talk to me. Mm. Truth hurts sometimes. 
We all need a little dose of reality That sometimes. little girl kicked Josh Gad in the gonads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. All right, let's see how he answers that one. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, your pancake is burned. That's exactly, <laughs> that's parenting in a nutshell. They hate you. Goodbye. Oh, and also, your breakfast is ruined. <laughs> and the house might be burning down. And the perfect pancake you made them is now in the trash. Yeah, because they, Cause they didn't crap on that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure the woman I'm meeting is just using this opportunity to practice speaking English. What makes you think that? Her Bumble profile says she's studying English and needs to practice. <laughs> So I never dated in the time of the apps. No. But I have been on a date that desperate, like, just like I need to be out of the house with somebody before. I have done that before. Like, not that level exactly. <laughs> but, like, clearly been with someone who was not interested in being, who, like, went for the free dinner sort yeah. of thing. Yes. Mm. Probably. <laughs> not one that, like, jumps out, but probably, yes. Have, have you ever gone for the free dinner, Kel? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, I have. That was my point. It's like nobody assumed that you went on one <laughs> that was like there for the free dinner. What's the free dinner in your case? <laughs> Man. I mean, I started to say, I can't believe he hadn't taken that to the shop yet. But then again, we've got a car, a brand new car sitting out in the driveway that's not been fixed since our accident. It's a very minor accident. I mean, case. it's a two dents that are like yeah, this two big. two little dents in the back. Uh, like, patch, that's but, different. Yeah, that's a whole thing. <laughs> and I'm just saying, I can see how life gets away with you. I can appreciate, I can empathize. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is a shopping mall. Shopping mall. Very good. It's like so nice of <laughs> him. I mean, like it is, but like I know it's like I know he he needs connection and stuff. She, but, like, I mean, she didn't lie. Like no. let's be let's put be honest. She put it up there on Front Street, didn't she? Yeah. I wonder how many other Bumble matches she got. I don't know. At least she got Josh Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get one. I don't want somebody like Josh Cat because he'd be nice. I want Olaf to come teach me English. <laughs> mm. We are on a date. He's so cute. Mm. Dang. Good woman. I'm just taking these. It's man. I'm a... No, you don't. Then tell me. I can't. Why? Because it's... Because I'm a werewolf. I mean, you already think I'm crazy. <laughs> That's so... Honestly, like, listen, you've hit this man. I mean, I guess <laughs> you might be in ongoing legal proceedings with him and his insurance company. Sure. So maybe admitting that you are actually insane <laughs> by saying you're a lycanthrope at this point, maybe that's too much for him. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Isla, I, I feel you. All right. In the hospital bed. Oxygen mask on her face. Did I do it? Is it my fault? Oh, running away for six months. Boy, I had heard him. I mean, he asked at the beginning of this episode, "Is it what I did?" Um, whoa, that's terrible. Yeah, that's really, really bad. Yeah. I mean, you can understand how somebody could get that way. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes it's easier to just. I was gonna say. I mean, you you didn't. You guys didn't have children. But mm -mm. when your first husband passed away, did you, I mean, did you have that feeling like, oh, I should just disappear? Uh, yeah, I kind of did in some physical ways, but also just some emotionally and mental ways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I mean, I did have kids when my wife and I split up, my first wife, and I don't, I couldn't have ever imagined leaving them. But on the flip side, though, like. I did think to myself, boy, this would all be way easier if I just mm -hmm. moved to the other side of the Wash globe. Wash your hands of it. Yes, yeah. never had to see you again. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's heavy homes 
Now, okay, listen. Inviting her into your bathroom, you know, after you've known her for 30 seconds is one thing. But, like, you just really trauma dumped on that woman. Uh, but it's trauma dump like, I think that's okay. Well, she had clearly made, she had exposed to him, she's got something so terrible she can't talk about yeah. it. And yet, um, <laughs> you know what this makes me think of, though, Kelly? It's funny. <laughs> the first time that she talked about... I shouldn't have put myself in this position or whatever. <laughs> it reminds me of trying to date people with my eating habits. <laughs> I'm an incredibly picky eater, like an insanely picky eater. Like? Like there's a list of like 12 things total that I really like and like 24 total in the world that I will eat at all. That's true. And now, as a 43-year-old man who is married with, like, grown children, basically, almost, I am very cool with talking to people about it, because I don't really care what you think. <laughs> but when I was in my 20s and dating, I mean, my first serious girlfriend in college, she and I were dating for, like, three weeks before we had the conversation. And everybody always goes, how did you have a date? But, I mean, you got to remember, like, we would just go to the movies or stuff, right? Like, yeah. we wouldn't go, or we'd go to fast food, and I would all, I would, I'd be like, oh, I, I ate, ate earlier. earlier. Yeah. That one, that one works. That one would work for years, honestly, unless you're living with someone. Yeah. Really. Um, anyway, I, I, I feel for her, because it is like. It's too early for me to tell you about this, but if we wait, then it's like a secret that I kept from you. You know? Mm-hmm. But I was just going to say, like, I know people, like, people are like, oh, you know, oh, I trauma dump, and it's like a, almost, it can be, people make it feel like almost shameful. Yeah, no. I am an oversharer. I am a trauma dumper. But mainly, it's not. It's not to, uh, like, he just dumped all that shit on her. Like, he wasn't, she wanted to know who he is. Well, that's who she, that's who he is. Like, if you want to know who I am, well, I'll give you the synopsis. It sounds really rough when I throw it out there. <laughs> but, like, we can, we can get deeper into that. But if you want to know who I am, that's who I am. If you want to know who I am. <laughs> That's who I am. That's what he did. That's what he did. All right, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. I don't. I don't like. Sure. I mean, I'm. I know there are some people that are like really trauma dump, but. I mean. That's a lot of trauma he needed to dump, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just let him be lighter. Yeah. You don't have to take it on. No. That's my baggage. It was a. Uh, accident when we were backpacking in Europe. It was gonna be our last vacation before we started trying to have a baby. Sorry. I find it very easy to be in your company, you know that? You made me sick. I couldn't hold you back. <laughs> I'm just not used to being around people you talk to. Yeah, it's been a while. I just, I don't wanna hurt you or Emma. Keys. My keys, wait. Mary! Okay. So I'm right. He is going to find out at the end of this episode that okay. she's a, a werewolf because she accidentally took his keys and so he's going to have to follow her home and it's like right at closing time, so to speak. So okay. my guess is she's going to turn. <clears throat> and it's been four weeks. She knew that specifically because. Because. Yes. Oh, man. I have never put two and two together on how good a metaphor where lycanthropy is for uh, uh, menstruation. Nope. Nope. What? No, like it's a... Uh, no, I'm saying like that's what it is. Like that's what they're doing here. Like the, like the female cycle is 
her werewolf cycle. And I guarantee you. Why oh, would you say that? Why would you think that that's what it is? Why would you think that they're making it her cycle? I was just thinking about the fact that she was tracking time for which she was like, he goes, it was three weeks ago. She goes, no, it was four weeks ago. How does she know so specifically that it was four weeks? Because it's her time of the month. No, it's because there's a full moon. Which is her werewolf time of the month. And that's what I'm saying. The fact that she cycles with the moon is like the, the very nature of lycanthropy. The fact that it's like a cycle for the werewolf, I think, is a, an interesting connection to like femininity and the whole. Okay. Like, yeah. Like and particularly when you think about the way that men in general treat it and like the way the patriarchy treats it, like biblically, like. You're unclean, you gotta go hide in the tent, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Also, it's like the feminine power of it is like scary. Anyway, if I'm right on the daughter also being a werewolf, that will absolutely be a through line of this show. Is that like werewolfism is is femininity or whatever as a as a metaphor. I am woman, hear me roar, so to speak. I am werewolf, I hear me howl. I don't know that I agree with you. Let's we'll see. I mean, you've seen it, so you know. What is is that? It's not crawfish. It's raw meat. Oh, raw meat. Alarm sound. Hello. Hey, uh, Sarah, are, are you good with Emma still? Of course we are. Do you need more time? I'll uh, I'll I'll let you guys know when I'm on my way back. Well done. Just have fun. Bye. I do love when people are talking past Mate, each other like that. Like this. It's 2021. Yeah. Just like they're like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Your date's going well. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Having two entirely different conversations. Yeah. I love this Australian cabbie who's like, you can't stalk a mate. It's 2021. <laughs> Go to the light. I'll pay you a little extra. No, no. What are you doing? Follow her. It's a bit long. I love her front yard. Can you follow me here? Why do you have chickens? Yeah. <laughs> right at this point, I'm like, ah, she's a devil worshiper. Yeah. Because <laughs> I grew up in the satanic panic. So I just go ahead and turn around and I head to the local Catholic Deuces. church and I get some holy water sprinkled on me and I confess my sins and I forget that that woman ever existed. Yep. In fact, until she forcefully bumps into me again in public, <laughs> apparently, which is her MO in this thing. Man, I mean, like, good. Listen, I understand 40 year old single dad, Isla Fisher's a catch. But this is stretching credulity at this moment that he's staying in the house with the goat. And, you know, yeah, the I goats. Mean, yeah. You are interested, obviously, what the hell's going on here. I mean, and you do need your keys. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. She's still got his keys. I mean, he's got to get a taxi back. But I know what taxis cost. It's like this dude's an arm and a leg out on this dinner. Is that a goat? You're just gonna have to deal with us now. Tell me, you're fucking shit. Can you imagine what you would be going through your head? Like, what? I mean, yeah, I'm like, oh, I would literally be. I would probably be praying, honestly. Like, I mean, he's dying. I'm dying yeah. at this point. I'm assuming I'm gonna die. <laughs> God, and the chickens are up there with him. Notice the goat's not making any noise anymore. Call marks on the door. We don't get to see her. Okay, I don't think I don't think I'm wrong in thinking that that was shot specifically. Good song, by the way. Um, yeah. I think that was specifically shot to give us, like, Peeping Tom impressions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, like, yeah. like, I mean, even the way Sing that his something eyes he's not are, supposed to. Yes. But, but not, like, there's not fear. 
is not the obvious emotion that he's playing there, honestly. And I think that's on purpose, too. Yeah. I'm telling you, lycanthropy is a metaphor for feminine power in this series. That's that's what we're going to see here, which I'm for. I'm down for. I dig it. I'm so glad. I love it. I I'm love so glad. it. It is. It is quirky in a certain way. Like it, it is funny, but it, it you know it's a dark comedy type type thing with this supernatural twist or whatever. But like it's yeah yeah. I so mean, it's not campy. Campy isn't the right word, but like no. But it's got a. But it's got like a like tongue in cheek. It's yes, like, it's a tongue in cheek. Yes. I mean, it's played straight. It's not played for no, comedy. No, totally. But it is It is funny in parts, too. Go over here and cancel this. I don't want to start the next episode yet. Um, speaking of not starting the next episode, um, if you are watching this on YouTube, then you can get the next episode already on our Patreon. Go to articulatecoven.com slash join. $2 a month or $2. more. Why aren't you muting? Friend? It's not muting. It's just going on and playing the next episode. What the whole thing is going to hell in a handbasket here? <laughs> there we go. What was I saying? Two dollars a month or more at articulatecoven.com slash join, and you can get access to all of our videos. This series, you can get our Articulate Coven main podcast about Anne Rice and her works. You can get the um, uh, uh, Flanagan podcast, which is about the Mike Flanagan shows and movies. And Ashley's show should be coming, right? Uh, yeah, by the time you're seeing this, the first episode probably of, uh, they're going to be covering Fall of the House of Usher from yes. Netflix and Mike Flanagan. That's going to be the first uh, after she and I have been covering Midnight Mass. So um, lots of cool stuff on the channel. Subscribe at uh, YouTube or at Patreon, and we'll be back soon with episode three. 